Thanks everybody for joining the rec commission. Um, it's Thursday, January 18th. We're a little off cycle here. Um, so a short, a couple of uh, members of the committee, but we do have quorum. So um, knowing we want to get through this agenda as quickly as we can, let's start out with the first item, which is approval of minutes. Um, Matt, I know a circulated minutes for all of us to take a look at. Um, can I get a, a motion to approve the minutes? This would be two, we'll run them as, we'll run them both together. So Chris got a motion to approve, second, second. Jonas. All right, uh, any questions, comments, clarifications required for the minutes from Matt? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I did a great job. You know, I, I can't thank you enough to that you're doing this for us and it's um, very clear reading through that. I remember like every part of the meeting, so. Uh, Awesome. All right, then um, motion to approve. Uh, any, let's see who, um, can I get all in all in favor of approving? All right, unanimous. Cool, all right. Um, do we have any members of the public on? I have no members of the public. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, so no public comment, then let's jump over to Winterfest. Uh, Becky, you want to fill us in? Oh. oh, yeah, could you promote Becky? Yep, so, yeah. nope, one more. I got to promote her to panelist. And Becky, are you here? Um, I had told her I was going to let her know ahead of time when she was coming up and I just let her know, uh, she may be sprinting over to, uh, Hello. oh, Becky's here. Hey, Becky. Thanks Sorry, for joining. I, I got, I pushed you up even farther than I thought I would be able to get you your first up. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for having me back. Um, give you the Winterfest update. Winterfest starts in eight days. Um, hoping it warms up a little bit, but we get a little snow. Um, we do have plans for snow and no snow. The only thing I don't have a plan for is rain. So fingers crossed. Uh, we don't have that. Um, we've been doing a lot of social media and postering around town. Um, our Winterfest page has, I was just looking at the stats, we're up like, what is our stats? Sorry, my phone shut down. Um, we're up 2.4K over last month for page views. So definitely getting the word out on um, all our activities. We're really fortunate. We have uh, 20 community partners and um, four business sponsors. Um, so we're, we're more than paying for Winterfest, which is great. Um, I feel like I've kind of pulled you all in on what's happening with Winterfest. Did you all have any questions specifically about it? I have, I have the uh, schedule ready to be shared on, on the screen if you would like me to do that. Um, yeah, that would be great. And uh, Matt, I see you've got your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, I I got I got the uh, reminder newspaper today, and it was on the front page of that, which was really good. Um, just a little note at the end of the article, it referred people to the AmherstMA.gov website, but there's no banner currently on the front of that website. Well, oh, it's one of the banners on the front of the website Winterfest, but um, there's been a bunch of other things going on uh, with the um, survey launch. Um, I don't know if she shared with you, I think I shared with you a couple months ago that I was working on a community survey. Yeah. Uh, so that launched on Friday. We were, um, Friday afternoon, the survey went out um, in English and in Spanish through the school district. 
as well oh, as... Oh, I guess it is. I guess it is in the rotation. It's just... It is in the yeah, rotation. To, it's just you can't you lock to... it kind oh. of thing. I wish he had okay. uh, linked to the Facebook page I sent him, but um, right. it is there. Um, I did go around and reposter because they take down posters. I spent like an hour visiting different uh, shops and places in town postering this afternoon. Um, so you can see the events. We have 33 events, 20 of which are free. Um, and um, the overall, um, all of the events, or I should say most of the events are getting um, as expected interest. Um, levels of interest. Um, we have a ton on our um, Winterfest Amherst page. We have the um, the link to the program as well as I created events for everything so I can see how many people are interested. Um, so um, kind of keeping track of that. Um, one thing that's happening over Winterfest that I do want to highlight is um, I've been working with the um, public health department. We're launching a mental health um, series designed to not only teach people about ways to improve their mental health, but to give them activities that build upon um, informative workshops. So it's like we're telling people ways to help improve their mental health and then giving them explicit opportunities to do it so they don't have to seek them out. Um, so that that series is launching on um, Tuesday, January 30th at 3 p.m. We have a UMass professor who's going to be uh, doing a talk about um, the winter blues and how to uh, deal with the, the sink of emotions that can happen after the holidays. Um, we're going to have, that's going to be the first of hopefully a six part series. Um, and Crest is going to be co-sponsoring some of the events with us. Which is, I know, not quite related to Winterfest, but it's a great way to get people to start thinking about you know, all of Winterfest is about building commuting and getting people out there and, you know, helping people feel connected and in a good mental space is an important um, part of building community. So. Um, Ray, can you send this document to the committee? I will. Um, I think this is the updated version, right, Becky? I want to make sure I have the right version yeah. here. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I that's a live document. That's Google Docs. So it's yeah, live. it is a live document. Okay. Okay. Got it. Good. Is there anything, uh, Becky, you you need from the committee here? Any any attend like any events in particular you'd like to see some representation at? I mean, I don't know how people's schedule looks. Hopefully, everybody can get out to one or a couple of these things, but. Yeah, if uh, people want to be at the Winterfest Games, that's, um, well, it's not launching. Hitchcock Center is launching the 10 to 11, and that's the re the reminder picture, which I have right here, um, with uh, Flaky, our mascot at the Hitchcock Center. Um, they're kicking off 10 to 11 on the 27th, but if... Uh, Anyone's available on uh, for the Winterfest games from one to four um, that Saturday? That would be great. Um, the craft fair is looking quite big, getting a lot of attention. Um, I think we have a nice variety of uh, sporting, skating, and other things um, happening during Winterfest. I'm sorry, I'm not more prepared. <laughs> no, and so one of the nice things that I think Becky's done an outstanding job of doing here. She mentioned about community partnerships and and building community through our programming here is that a lot of the things that are on here are are our promotion of people's activities, people's winter activities. And so uh, 
we don't have the need to have our commission say uh, do anything for the college the, the college games. Let's start with that. We don't have the need for commission to do anything for those college games that we're hosting and saying come and see Amherst College basketball at uh, you know versus uh, whoever. Um, uh, hockey and, and women's basketball that Saturday to open. Uh, you know, we are we are helping them and trying to lead, make provide as an option their programming or our partnerships with the library, our partnerships with uh, with ancestral bridges. Uh, those are things that we are not particular. We, we aren't necessarily running here, but actually, we are here. doing extra things with. Um, there's the um, the Winterfest games that we're doing something special, like that's all us. The craft fair is all us. The polar bear is um, extended hours, the power of bear splash. Um, the ice harvesting history, we're involved with helping plan and organize. Um, wait, can you scroll down yes. for me so I can see? Um, oh, the second page. Okay, so scroll back up. Um, so we're helping with, um, the improving mental health. I've all scheduled, been working with the facilitator on that ancestral bridges. Um, I've been working with the college. We're going to have refreshments and other things there. And I'm going to introduce Anika, um, the silver war tablets. We're doing, um, refreshments and, um, She's going to have some additions to the exhibits for that day. Um, the Medensky is doing a life during um, the Ice Age. I don't know if you have kids that love fossils, but Fred does the absolute best field trip um, for kids about fossils. Like I've taken preschool classrooms there and he has like kids walk like Tyrannosaurus Rexes through the exhibits so they're not touching anything he's awesome he's doing um a special ice age kind of um presentation for us and he is absolutely fantastic um the snowball intergenerational dance we're partnering with the senior center um on that we're going to have a photo booth we're having lots of um different fun things happening during that um, the Mead Art Museum is doing postcard making, which we will be at with um, Flaky, our mascot. And then the uh, finale is always the Luminaria and um, Fire and Ice. But we're also been partnering with Amherst College to do a National Girls and Women in Sports Day event. Um, that's going to be free and open to students in grades four through six. Um, so that's pretty exciting, but it's going to be a very busy eight days. So there are, things that are already happening, but we do have a, a hand in planning. I think it's like 13 of the events I'm directly involved in day of. Great stuff. Thank you. So, um, so what I what I was uh, what hopefully was trying to get across here was that um, uh, Amherst Recreation and Becky in particular have been working tirelessly to try and elevate these these other organizations to elevate our programming to make sure that that we put them all together on the same page and present them as part of a of a common theme. And so I, I feel like these, this is a huge step towards making Winterfest, again, a, 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 a large cultural event that, that recreation can steer and play, play this large role in. So Yeah. Fantastic. Any other thoughts, questions for Becky or Ray? I'm just curious, Becky, it's amazing programming. How um, did people come forward to you? Like, for instance, the, the the Fred, uh, the Amherst College, uh, the Benecki Museum, Museum, tying it to Ice no. Age. Was that, was that you or him? Or I, I emailed a bunch of groups <laughs> okay. yeah, and kind of um, tried to find community partners. Like uh, Kestrel, um, I did a pitch to them. They're doing um, guided nature walks at the Winterfest Games for us. 
Um, so that was a partnership I've been um, working on for a couple of months of trying to get them to run programming for us um, for free in not up in South Amherst, but kind of in the community where the community are. Um, they're actually going to be doing another event for us in April at Gruff Park um, along the Mill River. We're, part of my outreach goals this spring are to do programming within um, like where people already are. So like at Groff at Mill, like going there as opposed to having people come to us at some location, kind of hitting people where they are. Um, and then if I can switch off Winterfest, the survey launched, we have over 200 people. If you haven't seen it, um, I'm sure Ray can uh, send it to you. It would be good to see. We have uh, 200 and this afternoon, we had like 210 responses. Really interesting, lots of uh, written comments, which is good. So we'll be filtering through those um, after Winterfest. And, um, hopefully getting some more, it's going out again tomorrow in the superintendent's update, um, as well as some other groups uh, that we're sending it to. So hopeful on that. Um, the sensory initiative should, that we talked about previously should launch. Um, I'm waiting for a couple quotes on things, but that should launch in the next, um, in the next week, we should, um, we've been given clearance from the town manager to, um, to purchase the training and move forward on that. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I think that it, it's been a very, very busy uh, period since last time I spoke with you. So. Well, thanks for all you do. I think, um, I didn't see any other hands. I think we're good and hopefully we'll see you and each other at a whole bunch of these events. All right. Thank you all for uh, taking the time to speak with me. Thanks, Becky. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Bye. All right. I can't so remember what we said next. Do we want to just jump to the rink next and keep the Amy winter here? We can take anything. There are two things that Amy could do one is the rank i think the rank is the fun one let's start with the with the fun one and then we'll sort of uh it, i don't think we have a long presentation or anything but but to talk about uh pickleball and cpa sounds good i'm gonna elevate amy rizeki now Yes. Good evening, Amy. Hello. Here we hey, go. Amy. Let it adjust to my light. There we go. It's like you're perfectly, you've got whatever painting behind you. Yeah, it's, so it it's like a cow yeah. and it's, I always perfectly center. It makes me look like I have horns. Yes. I, I know. I suppose I should zoom from somewhere else. Um, hi, <laughs> good to see you guys tonight. Um, and, and I, I feel like I'm gonna have way less impressive of anything to say compared to that, that presentation on all the stuff you guys are pulling together for Winterfest. That's just outstanding. Um, Becky works really, really hard. So we're yeah. very proud of her. <laughs> yeah, no, it shows. That was just, that was phenomenal. Um, the two things I was gonna talk about. So first thing was just the ice skating rink. So, um, you know, my understanding is that's something that came up at, you know, one of your recent Rec commission meetings that you know we wanted to try and bring back that community ice skating rink again and so uh, as of earlier today that is officially open for business um it's installed on kendrick park it's a relatively small rink um but um it's and it's unfortunately we're we're not allowing hockey play on it it's really supposed to be a place where you know families and and kids and everyone can skate around and have some fun downtown um, so weather permitting, we will keep that going all winter long. Um, okay. And with this, I'll say, um, you know, partnership, Sanjay's been a huge um, supporter and he's worked really hard on this. Obviously, the Rec Commission and DPW have worked together, but also Amherst Hockey 
um, just kind of want to recognize them. They supplied a lot of the materials and then their, a bunch of their volunteers met with our staff to construct it. Um, and so certainly it's, it's been a real wonderful collaborative effort and we're glad to have it out there. So I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments about that. The only thing I was going to say is Ray, can, can we reference that in the Winterfest? I don't, I didn't look over it quickly, but that would probably be a good thing to put in there as well. That there's there's free skate or there's skate at Mullen, so there's also free skate in Center Town. I that that definitely makes sense to do so. I will uh, I'll talk to Becky about putting that up live onto that document um, and to highlight it for our for our services here. Great. I, so I have not been, I've been like homebound. Uh, oh, sorry, Jonas, you go ahead first. Oh, so I had a question on um, I. Used to live in Boston, and there was a, a rink in Newton that I think three winters in a row never froze. So I was I was just running by Kendrick, and I saw that. So I'm wondering, are there any? Is it just water? Like, is there any way to? Like, I mean, the worst would be antifreeze, but like, is there any kind of additive that uh, could make it be, not you know, probably out of my depth science ones here. I mean, in the season is basically what we're saying. <laughs> Just, um, just a way to make it so it's um, not going to melt, yeah. right? I guess, I don't know. Yeah, keep it Next up. Next week. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nothing to rush. No, I don't, and I'll say that's certainly, I think that's that's not a bad question. That's probably not, you know, not certainly this year, that's nothing that we could uh, make happen. But what I'd love to see, like even this year, this conversation on this kind of got started a little as we were getting into the winter season and then with everyone being gone for the holidays really it was like the fact that it's not on the winter fest schedule it's it's just kind of a product of this has been um a little more thrown together at the last minute but i think that it would certainly be appropriate for you guys to maybe you know talk about longer term solutions you know is the town interested in potentially having a more hardscaped um, site that people can do roller hockey or, you know, roller hockey in the summer and, you know, that we can use for ice um, in the winter. That's a public facility. I don't know. Um, but those are sorts of things that, you know, or are, you know, is there anything that we can do to extend the season um, on it? I, I don't know. Um, but certainly if, if this is something that's of continued interest, it would be worth um, having some real conversation about kind of longer term options. I'll send the name of a company to Ray that he can look at. I went ice skating in New York City, and it was on a stage, and it was warm out, um, and it's on it's on like a cold plate. I don't know how much the cold plate is, but this company literally handled it. It was literally ten dollars for forty five minutes and ten dollars to rent skates, and the amount. I mean, don't get me wrong, we we're under the Manhattan Bridge with the Brooklyn Bridge lit up on the sky. Ray, I'll send you a couple of pictures. Not of me skating. It's not a pretty thing. But, I mean, just the amount of sheer amount of people that were there was unbelievable. And and the pictures are unbelievable. So, but it's a, it's a cool company. And, but like I said, it was, it was raised up about three feet and you were literally, it was a cold plate. So even if it was 55 degrees, you were, you were able to skate. Hmm. So, but. Thanks, Chris. Mm hmm yeah, I think future-wise too. Do we want to have any sort of marketing opportunities on the dashers? I, I like are, have the materials been given to the town, or this is like on loan from Amherst Hockey? It was it was donated to the town. It's my okay. understanding is um, one of the you know pre previous Amherst Hockey members had a backdoor rink, but his kids have all outgrown that, so he essentially donated the rink and purchased. I think the association purchased a new liner, and so it's. I mean, it's, I think, 28 feet by 40 feet is what we have the materials for. If we wanted to be a little bigger, then we'd have to kind of purchase a couple more materials. And every year, I think you need a new liner. Those basically have about a one-year lifespan. Um, but that that's relatively small, small yeah. money for what you can get. So, again, like, I'd love to see the conversation happen yeah. um, for future years and maybe happen with a little more heads up so we can make some of these really great um, decisions. Well, thanks for turning around as quickly as you did. I think we brought it up in our December meeting. So that's unbelievable. To have it up and running through holiday season is uh, is is really great work. So thanks, Dave. Amy was really receptive to it in the very beginning, and uh, you know, I I tip my hat to DPW and the folks that constructed it because uh, 
you know, we had a plan to get it ready here pretty quickly, but then it got really, really cold in the last couple of days. And so they actually sped it up. The, mm -hmm. you know, we were planning on opening it this weekend, but they were able to get it all put together for the freeze here. If you guys woke up and walked outside this morning and, <laughs> and, and, and sort, of, sort of felt the air on your face, that, that, that was, uh, hey, today's got to be the day. We have to do this now. And it's basically a dusk to dawn or a dawn to dusk arrangement? Yes. Yeah, I mean, there's no, I'll say there's no specific lighting, although we didn't necessarily post hours okay. either. Um, you know, okay. I think yeah, no, yeah. Just, so it, it is, it is what it is. Um, you know, right. certainly I don't think anyone's going to chase you off if there's, you know, little kids there as, as it gets dark because uh, daylight hours are pretty limited right now. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. We were a little bit worried be, for the same reason that I'm sure I wasn't here when it happened, but when Kendrick was first put in and being right in between downtown the, and sort of UMass and the frats and stuff that, that you're a little bit worried what happens if, but, but you know, we're, we're hoping that signage and, and a very active public space, which makes it very attractive for all the right reasons, we hope that that also curbs the, the wrong reasons. Sure, well. All right, uh, great outdoor rink, and I'm sure you've got an equally positive uh, pickleball update. Am I right? Sure, oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, the big update for those of you guys that don't know, um, you know, so pickleball was one of four CPA proposals that we put forward this year, um, and ultimately, you know, th there was a, a very big public response <laughs> um, on a lot of sides regarding pickleball. And really kind of what that what that caused us to really, I guess, our reaction to that was let's pull the funding right now because clearly we need to do a little more research. We need to make sure that we have one site. We don't want to keep having to go back again and again and again. And so right now we're kind of in pause mode um, while some other things are moving forward. Um, but rest assured, like there is a meeting on the books in just a couple of weeks for Ray and Dave Zomack and myself to start the conversation on continuing it move forward. Um, so, you know, the kind of the bottom line on that is, you know, right now it's, we took it out of CPA, it's not moving forward, but it's not forgotten. And it's gonna be, you know, we're gonna be having that conversation again soon. And, um, you know, you guys as the Rec Commission have um, provided a lot of valuable input and we certainly will be talking to you guys about it as we, uh, you know, kind of understand all that public input and um, start to kind of think about what next steps might be. So I will probably be back at your next meeting to <laughs> talk, you know, talk about the next steps. But for now, just know it's not forgotten. It's just kind of paused. Understood. Okay. So, but I'll take any was... questions or comments on that. No, I mean, I, I don't have a, a question for you specifically, but for broadly, other folks, like, uh, I've never played pickleball. Is there any... Does anybody know, is there a movement to like make quieter equipment? Like there is like actually that's sort of the, yeah, the oh, go ahead, right Matt. <laughs> oh, I don't know any more than it has been announced yes. fairly recently that there is a new paddle, which is designed to make a lot less annoying noise. Okay. Yeah, I think there's, there's both paddles and there's balls from what I oh, understand. Yes, I, paddles I went and balls. way down the rabbit hole on pickleball pickleball noise at some point. Um, so there, there is equipment. The thing is, even communities that have said you can only use like the newer patter, paddles and the you know lower sound paddles, it's really hard to enforce that. And so sure. until that's the universally accepted um, equipment, it, it's it's not something you can rely on to alleviate the noise concerns. Yeah, but at least if the the, if industry, the industry in general, is going yes, yeah. they've like they, kind of turned a corner in recognizing. Yes, for sure. Perfect. And, uh, All right. Amy, I, think, I think I mentioned this towards the end of our last call. I don't know if you were on it. Um, just my question was about any kind of private private public uh, cooperation. So I'm not a business owner, and I'm not. I uh, but I was thinking. Like that uh, great ice cream stand on, um, it's Hadley, I think, technically. So that might nix the whole thing. But um, Mill Valley Road, like what a perfect place. You've got the ice cream. I think that farmer seems like he's divesting from the dairy because uh, he's, I think he sold land for the, that uh, storage space. 
that big storage space that went up. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like you put it between, there's the bike path leading to it. You bike there, you have to play your pickleball, get your ice cream. Um, I was that thinking, is... maybe we'll talk to this farmer. We'll talk to the Hadley Red Commission, yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. That is definitely. It, then it's like, I don't mean we don't need an Amherst pickleball if we've got one. If there's an one, and, and like, like one. as an idea that is a pivot that we've got to be thinking about. Um, uh, Andy kind of said it tongue in cheek there, but but we can't use CPA money obviously to develop in Hadley. Uh, uh, right. That, but, I mean, but, but, but that idea that is that I think that idea is the sort of thing that we need to start thinking about and seeing is there is there a a, a public private partnership that we can explore. I was also wondering about just unused buildings and I, I realize it might just create an echo chamber but like um i think i brought this up before bramble hill farm has a pretty much unused big um it's kind of semi-enclosed it's this big barn uh, they just store stuff in it um, and i was thinking for that you'd have to like enforce there's actually like a little yoga center yoga right off right at, you can see it from um southeast street um and there's parking there. So you have to say park there, walk, don't drive up because people walk walk their dogs there. And uh, but I just thought maybe yeah, unused build you know unused buildings that yeah. can go to waste. Um, no, and I think Jonas, what you're what you're hitting on is ex like Ray said, that's exactly the sort of creative thinking that we're exploring now as we're going back, and so. Um, yeah, I think all those suggestions are good and they're they're definitely in alignment with a lot of the, you know, kind of tongue in cheek ideas that then we say, huh, maybe um, that we've been thinking about. Um, so absolutely. I mean, at Public Works, we do say tongue in cheek. You give us a new DPW facility and you can definitely put pickleball in the front. You don't mind the noise. Uh, but <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think that that's going to get us one as fast as we want it. <laughs> but the fire station is going there, right? Right. Right. Yeah, maybe the fire station wants pickleball as a as a neighbor. <laughs> so. Well, I'll tell you, if you moved it indoor, it would certainly raise awareness for the pickleball players as to the volume of it. Right? They may not necessarily be as cognizant of the noise that they're making, but if they're in a room, they would certainly hear. It. I think though, like there's a lot of indoor pickleball play at uh, Hampshire College, at the uh, multi sport center. And so there's a lot of people that play pickleball in there. So I think they're aware of that. Although outside the bit, like at least the noise is contained to only the pickleball. And so again, like it's, it's, it, it might be a possibility to look at, you know, for sure. And th those ideas have been kicking around. So, yeah. And so. as of this past weekend, we are also experimenting with winter pickleball in space and makeshift space that we can offer basically it's sandlot pickleball. We're embracing the idea of Sandlot Pickleball right now and bringing people in. There's a little bit of a of an issue as to how uh, uh, how accessible it is. The, the demand is a lot more than the space that we have right now. But we're, Which we're setting up. You? We're using the side gyms at the middle school. Uh, oh, we have yeah. it down, and and we have that space. Unfortunately, right when we did it, one of the side gyms. Uh, ran into a little bit of uh, water damage. And so it's off limits for a little while. So we have small space, it's now smaller and folks showed up. So we're working on trying to try to streamline the, the efficiency of, of doing that a little bit, a little bit better here. We know it's makeshift, it's Sandlot and it's a real spirit of Sandlot, but we are trying to, to uh, get a little bit of access, indoor access over the winter, over the winter months sense all right uh any other questions comments for amy or can we let her go all right Good amy one. thanks as always for joining and keeping yeah. us up to date and congrats on getting that ring set up and yeah we'll uh Fantastic. see you next month well, i'll see you guys next month have a good one hopefully i'll see you guys at winterfest and around so yes right. even better always, always a pleasure amy thanks all right. Uh, I think next up, actually, I lost my um, agenda. It's the survey. Uh, Ray, the next couple updates are you sort of OSRP, 
updates on registration. And then, uh, Matt, I do have you on here for just any kind of CPAC updates after that, and then we'll give some of our. Uh, oh, that's where it is. I have to, one second, I've got to. With an open. I'm missing my tab. One moment, sorry. Got it. So, now is this the survey Becky was referring to, or this is a different survey? No, it's the second survey. This is a, a different, different survey. survey. It's outside of our department. Outside of our department, so there's two community engagement surveys that we're involved in right now. This one is that. Yes, share. Um, okay, so. This is the open space and recreation plan. Um, am I on here? Okay, the open space and recreation plan survey. This is uh, every so often the town is expected to um, expect to update its open space recreation uh, plan. Uh, uh, what it does is it, it essentially, I'm gonna read the, the intro paragraph here. The town of Amherst is committed to providing you with the best open space and recreation experience possible. This survey aims to gather information about the, about the users of Amherst open spaces and recreation facilities so we can address resident concerns and community needs. This information will also be crucial in updating our open space and recreation plan, which allows for the town to receive grant funding to maintain and improve parks, recreation, and conservation areas. We welcome your input and comments. Please fill out this questionnaire and return to town hall Dropbox. Uh, uh, what this is, it's two parts. Number one, we're looking for uh, community feedback into what we're doing for our purposes, what we're doing in recreation, the spaces that are available, how we use them, uh, what our what our mission, our goals are, uh, the, the, the involvement of the town. We're looking to see what the relationship is between the town and those spaces that are marked as recreational spaces. Same thing is being said right now with the conservation department and for conservation spaces. What is it that, how, what is the relationship between our town and the, and the public spaces that we uh, manage and control? Uh, in order, the second part of this is that in order for, for the town to receive any grant fundings to maintain or operate those, those spaces, parks, recreation, conservation, this, this uh, plan, our OSRP, needs to be updated every, I believe it's seven or eight years. Um, and so we're right now in the process of trying to update that plan. Uh, I was introduced to it a couple months ago and the planning department is sitting with conservation and with and with recreation to try and make sure that this survey allows us the best information to put that together. We are, of course, a, a significant part of the of the survey, um, uh, and so opportune time. This is the right time for it to come out because we have the meeting tonight. And I was hoping that it would be that the document would be available to be shared with you all. Uh, if it wasn't done today, then I would have just told you basically this is what the plan is, but I was able to share with you all as the commissioners earlier today, as soon as it came to me, that this is the document that we're going to, that we're starting with. I've had a couple of so, you all forward. Go ahead, interrupt. So, so is this going to be mailed to all households? Is that the plan? This is, this is going to become available to all houses. I don't know if the plan is to mail it to everybody. I believe, I believe the, that the, access we want wide access so so it may be a, a, a canvas mailing um, uh, but it is it is going to be pushed through through uh, uh, you know through our the, the where we are right now is we want to make sure that recreation and the commission has a chance to look at the survey to offer any feedback if there's if there's any changes or anything that you feel like absolutely has to be added to this it is we're looking for your feedback into the into the uh, questions on the survey um, some of the feedback I got already was was uh, uh, 
basically that that you know in distinguishing between the things that we offer and in distinguishing between uh, space the spaces that uh, where was it uh, to be able to pull out the 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 uses of Cherry Hill and to separate them so it's not just looking at large things. Do you use Cherry Hill? Are you looking to try and uh, uh, to try and maintain Cherry Hill? Do, what Cherry Hill means a lot of different things, and to and to identify them as paths to let people identify their use of it being the the uh, paths and nature aspects uh, for them to look at cross country skiing. Uh, to look at it as golf, to be able to identify all the different versatile purposes for our spaces is one thing. That, you know, some of this is not directly us uh, because there are recreational spaces that are involved in this also. Um, I haven't programmed or done anything with Puffer's Pond. Uh, I haven't done anything with, with the trail services. Um, uh, there are pieces in here that don't necessarily affect us directly, but those those parts of recreational spaces that we do overlap with, um, we we spent the last month basically trying to look at the wording of these and to try and get as much of a sense from from the town as to how those spaces are being used right now. I know it just came to you all today. I know that you all just had a chance to look at it. Maybe some of you all are looking at it for the first time now in the meeting here. Uh, I don't need you all to vote on anything right now, but as you look at it, as you, I did share it with you before, I can, I'm sharing it here. If there's anything that you want to go and find on here for numbers, I can, I can find it to go over them. But what I need you to do inside the next week, because, because the final draft after con, CONCOM and the Rec Commission get finished with, with our feedback, our final draft should be available at the end of next week. And so if there's anything in, if there's anything in here that you are, are uh, that you'd like to see question asked differently, or if there's anything in here that you have reservations about the town asking or any, anything like that, uh, you certainly can, can uh, uh, address those with me or with Rob Wachilla, uh, 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 with, with the planning department, you can, you can, you can, you can talk to, you can talk to the folks that are, that are, that are actively putting this together, or you can send those, those, that feedback through me, which I would be happy to share with them in the process, but we would like for it to be able to go live in time to, to gather and do do some debt analysis by March. A couple of quick thoughts. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll send you an email afterwards, but um, one of the things that, uh, I don't know whether this was intentionally left off or not, but in terms of which open spaces do you use, it also this seems like this could be an opportunity to sort of advertise, like which of, here's the list of public spaces that you have available to use, which ones do you use? Because I expect there's a lot of folks who have no idea how many opportunities there are. It may just be focused on their their neighborhood uh, trail. So that might be a kind of a, an opportunity to, to help generate some interest. And then I will shoot you some feedback. I think just the, the age ranges and the income ranges, there's like some federal standards for stuff like that. It might make sense yeah. to align more with that. Um, certainly, if, if we're going to use this to get uh, trying to get some federal grants or, or things like that, to allow us to slice the data in a, in a way that makes this a bit more future proof. Okay. Any other quick thoughts, folks? I know I do want to try to get us done by seven. Um, this drops. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. No, I'm, I don't have. Oh, this Matt. Oh, this is Matt. Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. So, um, I just took a quick look through it. It's all, it seems to be organized with the open space and conservation lane questions and then the recreation questions. I'm not sure that everyone who receives this will clearly understand the difference or, or, or will, will, you know, understand that it's in two parts. Like in the first part, you're saying list your three favorite open spaces. I'm sure a lot of people are going to say Groff Park. Yes. And um, 
I think you you think that Groff Park is a recreation area. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So uh, I don't know the solution to that, whether it's not to make the distinction in the survey or whether it's to somehow make it more clear what the distinction is. That, I think that's an outstanding uh, observation. I, I, uh, if it may be to to just let it let it go. That last question, it may be that that you that you just let it go, or it may be that you emphasize with the distinction between the two that this is recreation part chapter the survey and say that there is, you know, this is the recreation part of the survey. This is the conservation part of the survey. Um, yeah, to, I, or, I or at least, or at least. When you say conservation, you mean you mean natural undeveloped lands, correct? Versus versus developed parkland, correct? Yeah, I would say I, I think that's a great call out too, Matt. I think if you could, if if there's a way to combine to shorten this as opposed to section one, section two, yeah. Seven people, I mean that that would probably be it. the ideal situation is to just combine it, but I don't know if you, there's a requirement for you to separate it. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that's a requirement either. I haven't heard anything about the requirement there, but I, it at least is worth having that. I, I can share that feedback, certainly. You want to give us a date? I know you mentioned you want to get this out by the next week, but what's the... What's they, sort told of the me that, they told me that we should have any corrections or feedback in by, I'd say, next Thursday. Feedback. So feedback to you by next Thursday. By next Thursday. Okay. Um, would you mind actually, Ray, also just sending oh, an email? I, to I, the I also have a, a small a small suggestion in climate change. Yep. Um, uh, there's also an issue potentially of invasive species, both flora and fauna. Invasive species. Like that would probably be pretty high on my list. Uh, what number is that? Oh, in, in, in climate change questions, it's at the end of the survey. Uh huh. Number thirty, question thirty. So, there there there, there could be an issue with um okay. with invasive invasive okay. plants and animals. All right. Well, I think that's a perfect example of feedback Ray's looking for. If folks can read this. Get feedback to Ray by next week, and then Ray, I was wondering if you could just send a, a note to you know, Gene, and Jeremy, and Sanjay as well, so we hear from them. Um, I certainly will. All right, very good. Um, any other quick thoughts? Otherwise, you know, please send those over to Ray in an email. I appreciate um, you guys' attention to it. Got it. All right. Um, so next up we have, let's talk about just status of spring sports registration. Just, I know we mentioned last do, month do during one of do, feedback. Just do you like want to do the summer camp? I'm sorry, Andy. Do you want to do the summer camp piece first? Cause you know, Chris is leaving. All right. Well, we're going to lose quorum also when Chris leaves. So okay. let's it. just Got try it. to go through everything quick if we can. Let, how about let's just let Ray talk without questions. Um, and then I, Chris will reserve some time for you at the end for your specific ones. I can make the uh, registration piece really quickly. Uh, I can make it really quick. Uh, Jose has has submitted all of our uh, all of our information for programs to uh, to our registration. And so, if they aren't up immediately, if they aren't already up to be uh, uh, for for families to register for spring sports then they will be momentarily. Um, uh, our, our spring schedule is very similar as it was last year. So the things that are, that are sort of in, in flux are, are uh, sports that may be pulled up to the high school, places where the high school may, may have needs for their JV programs or for the, so we're looking at lacrosse in particular terms of what the numbers will be for for our spring sports are we offering are we offering spring sports for lacrosse are we offering uh, middle school age sports for lacrosse um, 
the other piece that is that is just sort of in the back of our, not in the back of our mind anymore it's moved to the front of our mind now is the fort river project which is scheduled to begin uh in early march um where they where they shut down much of the fields in fort river and so we We've been already been working to try and to try and schedule space for uh, the the sports that we have that are that will be displaced are lacrosse, softball, uh, uh, adult co-ed softball, and ultimate. Uh, are is, three is, sports. Is lacrosse lacrosse displaced from Fort River? Aren't they not from Fort River? Not from Fort River, but it affects lacrosse because of the space that we have. There. It's going to. Uh, and Andy, I can talk to you. Any outdoor right. fields, any outdoor field space. Sorry, it, Fair enough. It okay. made, it, ecosystems collide, uh, yeah. and so yeah. we've. We, I think we are, we're coming up with a plan that allows us the 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 least inconvenience for everybody. And so scheduling that space is is another thing that affects registration, affects the sports that are being registered for, but it does not affect the fact that we have those the registration information, the sports that we're offering. Uh, should be posted and available. The next step that we have to have here, and I started to talk to Andy about this, is that we uh, well, we want to give opportunities for those coaches and the programs to do a little bit of advertising, to do a little bit of uh, hey, this is the, these are the programs that we have here, and to, to do a little bit of advertisement for those programs. Um, uh, and so that that may be a little bit of like marketing for our programs to get out there and encourage kids to sign up. Uh, do something active, be out there and participate in, in recreational programming. But in terms of the in terms of our sports programming, we are we are in line to be up a little bit earlier than we were last year and certainly have a chance to, to uh, hire and and uh, uh, put together a, a, you know, strong programs throughout. Okay. All right. Um, you want to hit the summer CIT stuff? Certainly. Um, uh, I, that wasn't one that I was that it was on my on my agenda for preparation. But so uh, I know that uh, Andy and Chris sort of mentioned it when they were coming into the meeting today. So I can actually wait and see if there's some. If there's a question or a proposal that you have that I can respond to, I think it would be easier if I respond to it. Well, I mean, the, the question I have is, I know we, we didn't have the program, like we had it two years ago, we didn't have it last year. Um, I mean, obviously I think it's a good program for my daughter, but I also think it was a very good program for two things. It was to build community. Um, it was also a good way to some extra income and also, um, you know, for future, counselors you know you're you're pulling from an area where you know you already kind of know the person um you know i mean i, I just I, I've, I've been really struggling lately in uh, this interim season with my daughter and finding her stuff to do she's 15 and um you know she's not a she's not a cross country skier it's just like uh, i've asked people you know even if she can donate her time to an after school program and you know, it's just, I, I don't understand, you know, some of the no's I get very quickly. Not from you, Ray. Not from you. It's, not a, it's, not, a, it's, it's not a Ray thing. I'm not blaming Ray. I'm frustrated because here's a kid that should be able to go to an after school program and donate her time to some younger kids or girls or whatever and help. And people are looking at me like I get six heads. Like, what do you mean? It's just like, guys, what do, you, what do you mean? Like, here, take some high school kids, send them to I'm not even looking for her to get paid. I said, donate time. Yeah. So uh, that's perfect. Uh, uh, you were on my mind the last week or two here as we were going through this because I've heard you before you were on the commission and I've heard you since you joined the commission that this is one of the points that you're looking at. This is one of the primary points that you're looking at both for inside of your own house and also for rec programming yeah. and what, it, what the use is for us. Uh, I, I want to make it clear that last year, there were a number of different things that we, you don't have to convince me or us that the CIT program is worthwhile. I saw it firsthand two years ago and I thought it was one of the best things that, that, our, that our outreach program provided over the course of my first uh, go round through the, through, the, uh, 
through through recreation. Um, I love the the teacher in me. Loved the 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 generativity. Loved the creating the next generation of right. counselors. We had a great batch of kids that were there. So last year, because of the timing of our outreach turnover, and also because it would have it would have uh, it would have destroyed our ability to do it well if already like if Marion and I were the ones that were that were responsible for for interviewing and bringing them in and we aren't going to be the ones that are they're using them or whatever it would have been it, it potentially is creating too much management and too much management nightmare for us in order to bring that in at that time so the timing was terrible for us last year despite the fact that we wanted to keep it going um this year we are fully committed to bringing it back uh, uh we uh, marion myself and becky dimling who is now in charge of our outreach program uh uh, we, uh, we're we all, it's an echo chamber in there that we really want the CIT program to be successful for all the reasons you said, because it gives kids a chance to participate. There's that gap that gets, that gets placed between kids when they age out of camp and then for a couple of years before they go to high school, what do you do with your summer times? What do you do with summer camp? What do you, maybe if I don't want to do a sport, we know that there is space for the kids that, that needs to be answered. And there's also a need that we have to put people into the pipeline. So we're talking about bringing CITs and also potentially junior counselors, which would, which would uh, probably be in the, in the area that, that, Maisie would 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 be would right. be moving because of her age, but we're talking about doing junior counselors and CITs that allow us to we have to, we have to manage our ratio, but the two of them actually help us in managing the ratio. Uh, we may end up doing it for we may have a small group of rotating people into the CITs, but we've okay. already started the conversations that we. Have, uh, Becky, Becky was there with us when we, because we need to post for registration for summer camp right. coming up. So we, it was an emergency that we talked about what the summer camp registration was going to look like, all getting kids into the camps. But you can't have that conversation without also saying, are we committed to the CIT program? Is that going to be a part of our program? And right now, the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, and so we just have to find out the numbers and the interview process. One of the things that I thought we did really, really well was a service that we provided those kids that were coming through. We wanted to make sure that we we're giving them interview experience. We want to give them feedback on mm -hmm. the interview. Uh, right. We wanted to give them a chance to do all of that. It's a, it's an educational practice that, that, in addition to them being able to help us, we are committed to making that CIT program a, a central part of our of our summer camps again. And and most importantly, uh, uh, Chris, I hear you. Uh, no, no. All of well, it's all just of that. a lot of her friends. I mean, there was you know, there's summertime camp friends out of that too. In that in that group, it's a crucial. You know, this this age group from like 12 to 15 is like forgotten. You know, she can't drive. It's, it, it, I know it's not just me. There's other parents out there that have the same issue right now, and it's just frustrating. You know, you know that's yeah. th that's the same gap that. Uh, my early conversations with Sanjay about about getting middle school baseball were based around look when they age out of this program then there's this gap that that hits them here same right. thing happens with soccer kids same thing like there's this, this gap that's going across the board here for kids and it just so hits them when they reach the uh, the middle school and that middle school experience is complicated for a lot of different reasons we don't want to add to it we want to make sure that we yeah. have that opportunity but I, I think, to be honest with you, I'm sorry, Matt, this is my last thing. Um, I, I think this is where, where REC can hopefully, you know, pick up. Not just for the CIT and, and, and other programs in that gap thing, you know. And, and yep. it's, yep. A, it's a great program, and it, it you know, so I'm, I'm good. All right. Thank you. What you got, Matt? I was just going to say that um, some of the private camps at, in town, like the multi art summer camp and the yep. um, the rattlesnake gulch do actually have these pretty well developed CIT and junior counselor programs that my children have participated in, and those were paid. Well, once you got to the counselor party, they were paid. We're looking to pay junior counselors. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely looking to pay junior counselors, and that's 
uh, yeah. they help they help us towards ratio anyways, but we're looking to pay junior counselors. Right. And so we're developing that program. It, it is generativity. Good. My focus is generativity. We're trying to make sure that kids learn how to step up into that, that next phase. All right, well, Ray, you have all my information. If you need any help with any of that program, you have my numbers and my email. Please reach out. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Hey, Matt, anything on CPAC to report? Otherwise, I know Chris has got a roll here. I can just give you the result. So, okay. um, obviously, there was, uh, we had to, there was a pretty, we had to cut from the overall number of things that were asked for. We didn't have enough money, but recreation actually came out very well. Recreation was asking for 1.1 million and was granted 980,000. So other than other than the pickleball, which the town decided to withdraw their um, proposal because of the nature of the conversation that happened there, um, the, the tennis courts were funded the softball facilities was fully funded at all three locations. The revitalization of War Memorial Pool area was granted the 750000 wow. And the uh, trail restoration enhancement was granted 86000 of the requested 100000 Great. Fantastic. Thanks for awesome. so I think that's a very good result. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for another great season there, Matt, because yeah. that, that's... Well, it's really round. Dave Zymek, you should thank. He's really the engine behind all this that's right you can thank both of you guys all right yeah. good all right i see chris moving um ray any other news for us in business no nothing nothing for me either so um why don't we call it we can adjourn here at uh, 706 uh don't forget to get your feedback to ray before next thursday and right. i put out there by the February 12th right now as kind of the next one, try to get us back to the sort of the Monday, uh, you know, the monthly cadence. So hopefully that works. I'll float that out for the, uh, for the folks that aren't here also. Right. Just to make then, sure that they're in. Cool. Yeah. And then hopefully we'll see folks at Winterfest. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. All right. Take care.